at graduation time, pretty much there was only jobs to work in real estate offices, searching titles and that. I had applied in different places, but hadn't, you know, didn't get anything because a lot of the articling students from the university were taking up those jobs to start, you know, their career. So at that time, I was, you um, know, well, seeing who was to be my future husband, but he lived in Strathroy, and so I thought, well, I'd like to, uh, you know, get back into doing something, doing some work. You could pretty much set your own hours. So that was great. She went to school in the afternoon and I went and did home care for two or three hours. As the years went on, then they were offering courses and that and you started just as homemaking and then you were at level two and then level at level three um, they were bringing in the PSW course and really encouraging us to bridge to that. Wow. So, you know, the job certainly evolved in that time from what we started out doing and what we're doing now. What was it like in the beginning? Oh, in the beginning, well, you were basically just a, you know, you were called a homemaker and that's what you were expected to do. You had to go in and, and uh, make meals and, uh, you know, you, you did the cleaning and they'd want you to, they thought you were going to bake pies and all this <laughs> great things, you know. And I remember one of my uh, first clients was, um, an elderly gentleman who still lived on the farm and uh, the whole idea of me going was to you know help him with his personal care and encourage him to have a bath once a week <laughs> and I remember uh, about this the first day I went there or um, oh, it's probably I'd been for a few visits but one day I went and I couldn't find him couldn't find him anywhere the house was open the dog was there and and then I heard him calling, Barb, Barb, I'm up here. And there he was up in the barnyard, and there was a cow delivering, like having her calf. Oh my God. And he says, you come up here and hold this stick and keep, because the rest of the cows were quite curious. And I thought, I said, I, I can't do that. <laughs> I'm not allowed to do that. Oh, they won't hurt you. They won't hurt you. So anyway, I stood right by the gate, and I had the stick. And, you know, I didn't really have to do anything but just stand there. And that kept the other cows away. And then... Sure enough, the cow that she had her calf, and oh my God. the gentleman, you know, he <laughs> cleaned the calf up, got the mouth all clean, and the the calf's mom came over, and you know, they bonded, and then, oh yeah, I said, well, do you, are you ready to come back to the house now? And he said, yeah, I think they're all right. So he came in and got cleaned up, and we just went on went with on our little day. visit. Wow. But you know, you always had longer times too, like you'd have two hours or three hours or whatever. So. Take me to the beginning. You know, you were telling me that you were going to for a checkup. Oh, okay. Yeah, I had um, a routine mammogram coming up. Once you turned 50, you were notified that um, you should have a mammogram. And then every two years, you would have one. So it was coming up my due date to have that done. And I, I went and had my mammogram. And then, um, oh, a day later, I think it was, you know, I came home and on the answering machine, there was a message that could I come back for um, a second screening? And uh, I thought, oh, great, you know, whole hum, like I have to try and book off time now to go back. And I remember thinking and that I, you know, I'd heard other women saying, oh, it's such a drag. Yeah, they'll call you back and you go back and, and there's nothing anyway, you know. And you're almost at that point of, oh, you know. Do I have, you know, should I really even bother going? Do you want to tell the camera about the importance of getting tested and urging all the women watching t to get tested? Oh, yes, definitely. Every woman out there, please, please go and have your mammogram. You have to take care of yourself in order to take care of the people that depend on you and love you and want you forever. So please, please go and have that uncomfortable test done because it could save your life. And I feel it has saved mine. Thank you. So for everyone who likes our Facebook page, the SEIU will donate $1 towards the Canadian Breast Cancer Foundation.
Thank you.